Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. It's been a while since I actually did any uh, commentary on Batman, but I have been working uh, very busy on my other channel, continuing covering Tom Clancy's The Division 2. But some developments have shown up lately around canceled Batman games and projects. And, you know, on Instagram, a former designer actually did come out and showcase some art that he had done. Uh, I saw this on the Jay's channel and I, you know, I did some further digging. And yes, there was a canceled Batman game, but uh, this is not something that we didn't know. This is something that was rumored, but, you know, it was kind of still uh, if or or where or was or whatever it is, there was no confirmation until just now. And I think that really sends a huge message and really does um, help us ask or wonder what in the world, you know, was Warner Brothers thinking when they went through this process? Could it have been that they didn't feel like there was enough excitement, um, you know, for fans? Did they feel like there was not enough time to work on the project? Did they feel like there was not enough experience, uh, you know, for them to be able to execute what Rocksteady had executed uh, regarding Arkham Knight? Or was it that, you know, they were looking for the, the, the model that will be more profitable for them? Or it was just in general, management did not see any vision in releasing more Batman games. Now, when you try to answer those questions, what you're going to come up with is who in the world would have thought about canceling a Batman game when there are a huge number of fans that have basically been speculating about this game for years. I mean, we're in 2020 and we are just seeing the very first official confirmation of a game related to Batman. And even in this game, Batman is so-called dead. So I don't know what must have gone through the thinking process for Warner Brothers to be able to check off on Gotham Knights, but they did not check off on any other Batman or even Damian Wynn projects that were, you know, uh, proposed in the past. And to me, I think a lot of it is just financial uh, aspects of things. Uh, if you think about single player games, it seems like a lot of, you know, companies that do single player games, um, you know, you need to take huge risks to make them. But one company that doesn't really shy away from them is Sony, but they do have a huge war chest. They have a huge slush fund that they can use to actually put out to develop these games. And I don't know why Warner Brothers, even though they seem to have a huge slush fund, did not go with this. Now, we do know now that Warner Brothers, uh, you know, Interactive Entertainment was at some point testing, to, you know, the waters to see if they were a viable company. You know, maybe they wanted to sell or maybe it was just news put out to see their valuation and to maybe kind of get things tightened up within their corporate structure. But it's in, it's uh, quite interesting, though, to kind of see that all of this is now what we have, you know, as a, as the game, uh, which is this and then, you know, Suicide Squad being confirmed and coming out. So I wonder what's going to happen for the future of the studio. Um, and I think it's right here in front of us, but many of us don't really want to, uh, we don't really want to admit that that's what it is. This, this game called Gotham Knights, to me, seems more like it will have some level of a service model. Even though they've said it's not going to be games as a service outrightly, just the fact that it does have a multiplayer player aspect to it already tells me that there is room for the game to expand and broaden its scope. Now, whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know, to be very honest with you. I will play a game like this, no doubt. I do like Assassin's Creed. The, the, the creative director of this game came from Ubisoft, and for those of you who know Ubisoft and their business models, it is about that lucr lucrative venture, and I think a multiplayer you know, venture looks a lot lucrative right now for Warner Brothers games and you know even though they may make it a little less uh, games as a servicey I think they are at, at least changing up the model slightly to dabble into that region I mean this is definitely not your Spider-Man or Arkham style execution this is straight up Robin has joined the party I mean if you're watching even this gameplay uh, that I'm using to cover this commentary you'll see that you know there's a multiplayer aspect of this sequence going on and it was important enough for them to show this first which is quite interesting huh I mean why not show the single player aspect or rather than kind of show this and I think this was shown in order to test out the community response to this to see how the fans are feeling and what they're going to you know make of this but I don't think this needs to be the way that it should go I think a more creative approach can actually be uh, you know done and Ghost Recon uh, which is an Ubisoft game Ghost Recon Breakpoint actually has done something of that sort in fact they overhauled the game 
and have now made it with uh, two different experiences. One where you can have uh, a kind of a guided and, a, you know, much more, I would say, uh, much more less intense, uh, you know, immersion or one that you have full immersion where you don't have any gear, any cosmetic type deals. You're just playing the game from the grounded experience. And I think if they can do something like that with a game like this, it will really work. Now, yes, the multiplayer aspects and all that are still there, but they don't need to make this so-called XP gear farming type thing so uh, vivid that it turns people off. I think they can actually you know, execute it smoothly, just like Ghost of Tsushima did, where you never really did know, uh, you know, from looking at the screen, if a character was super leveled up until they really started fighting or until they started engaging enemies, then you knew the power of the character because the skill tree and the RPG elements are hidden, you know, behind. But then you look at this gameplay, you know, you're hitting enemies and numbers are flying all over the place. That's a little too cringy to me, in my opinion. I feel like there are ways that this can be executed without any of that extra RPG speak that shouts, hey, I'm an RPG, but still feels like a grounded and solid RPG if done right. But I think canceling those games were probably a means for Warner Brothers to get to this, Warner Brothers games anyways, to get to this point where they can carry out some kind of a service model with a, one of their major IPs and test it out. And I think they didn't want to put Batman's name on the front of it. They wanted to maybe throw these other knights, uh, you know, out there first to see how fans respond to it. And depending on how they do, then, you know, they're probably going to bring something on the Batman side. And if not, then, you know, Batman is probably going to continue to exist as a single player franchise if they ever make a video game around it but at the end of the day i want to hear your thoughts this is just my you know thoughts about all of this i appreciate you guys so much Ooh, look at those numbers popping yikes i guess we'll see hopefully in another video thanks for watching peace out